here we are near Aias Theodorus, almost at the sea, but the valley runs down from the mountains and we're in a field of uh, modern agriculture, industrial agriculture, large machines and this is baled animal food. It's uh, oats, some wheat, it's sold as fodder for animals and also for bedding. The reason we show it on a film to do with shepherds and shepherding is, is because in the modern era shepherds don't go so much in the hills because they can't find the people who are prepared to scramble over the rocks. Of course the sheep and the goats would be fine doing that. So there's a sort of symbiosis here where the industrial farmer is inviting the shepherds to come and clean the area after the harvest. So they take the flocks over the stubble, they take the last of the grain, but they also eat some of the weeds. So in, in a way they clean it, they give it a end of season wash. So it works for both. And shepherds in this day and age, they have to find whatever niche they can in the modern era. Gone are the days when shepherds would uh, travel the Carpathians and maybe, maybe travel 4,000 kilometers and transhumans of taking them high in the mountains. This now is very rare. So we want to tell the story of shepherds and shepherding and one really good way to do it, to involve young people, is to talk about fashion. And this, this bleached landscape with these monumental bales of animal food is an interesting image. The shepherds in this landscape, this summer landscape, would be wearing masks at certain times of the year because of the bot fly. The bot fly actually squirts its little maggots in your eye. It's looking to do it to sheep, not to people really. And they migrate into the nose and, and a horrible maggot grows here inside. Uh, it's usually the end of the sheep, quite a long painful death. So the shepherds had a mask uh, which they wore here and they put over their faces when they heard the buzzing of the fly. And we've taken this fact and uh, glamorised it a bit and we have a series of masks that takes the theme a little bit further. And to see the shepherd outfits with these rather incongruous and interesting masks for us is a good idea. This is Lula's farm, close to Hirokitia. Probably Lula's ancestors have been farming this valley for centuries. The family now, seven children, uh, both Lula and her husband are shepherds. They've made a business with tourists who come here to see the milking, uh, sometimes take part in the milking, but definitely see the halloumi and the anari cheese being made. Uh, and she sells as much as she can make. 
So this is a modern product and has really taken over from wool and sheepskin. But wool and sheepskin are also good products so we're interested to keep this going and rejuvenate these markets through shepherd inspired fashion. Luna is a, a very dynamic person. The tourists that come here, they get to cuddle the goats, they maybe get to milk them, they see the cheese being made. I've known them for maybe 15 years. People come here to buy the cheese. They don't have to go selling it to supermarkets. They make as much as they can. They sell everything they make. And some people might say, well, why don't they just get more sheep and more goats? But they don't do that because the size of the flock fits this landscape behind us. And they can graze it without damaging it. So it's a truly sustainable example of uh, sheep and shepherding. <laughs> Me filis esto stoma que mu pe manas de namo ya ti saga piston gai motrele no me ya sena me galo sa que Down the hill here at the bottom of this valley is the Neolithic site of Herokitia 8,000 years old, very important in the history of art. It's where the first painted pottery in Cyprus was produced. Some people would say it's where pottery was invented because they were making stone vessels in Hirokitia in the Neolithic period. And it's not difficult to imagine the Neolithic shepherds coming up into this valley as well. The first sheep here were domesticated mouflon. Mouflon is a wild sheep here in Cyprus and then they mixed them with some from Anatolia and slowly slowly they got the the sheep uh, that we see today so it's a real historical cultural genetic story and it's a great thing to talk about a great thing to inform people about and also a good thing to link into our theme of shepherd inspired fashion <laughs>
This is St Spiridon's Chapel, uh, close to Lula's Farm, also close to Cato Gris. Uh, and Spiridon was a, a shepherd. So for the shepherd inspired fashion we, we look at his icons and especially this hat. So this hat was made from a roll of grass. He was a humble man and he was a good man. And I think this says something about shepherds. Uh, there are officially about 90 Orthodox saints who were shepherds. And of course, Jesus Christ is referred very often to as uh, the Good Shepherd. So this is a link with the past. People aren't so religious these days, but uh, it's a historical fact. And the importance of shepherds was very great. For 90 of them to become saints, they were pretty special people. And of course there are others in literature and the uh, patrimony of Greek literature is totally full of, of shepherds. So in history shepherds were important uh, in literature, but also to bring it to the modern day with the Booker Prize winner Paolo Coelho, who tells the tale of a shepherd crossing over to North Africa and wandering through the desert, finding his Bedouin love, is a really great romantic tale. And this is all part of what we want to promote about shepherds. The romance, the literature, their place in this ancient landscape, which is no longer likely to continue. So this is why we are getting involved. It's so sustainable that we want it to carry on. It's a great example of the four pillars of sustainability. Cultural, social, environmental, and through a place like Lula's Farm, economical as well. Here by St Spiridon's Chapel are two abandoned villages. This illustrates the fact that the landscape has changed, the use of the landscape, people leave the countryside, move to the cities, the countryside becomes empty and a bit derelict. Shepherding is a countryside pastoral activity. It's important that more people live in the countryside. And we want to encourage people to move back to the countryside and make the countryside that vibrant economy that it has been for centuries. Here we are in beautiful Cato Gris, a mountain village, Larnica district of Cyprus, a very ancient village from at least the early medieval period, famous for shepherds. So until maybe a hundred years ago, there were 20, 30, even 40 shepherds living here. Now there are none. In this mural, which is brand new, produced, finished only yesterday, by Phil Bird and Anna Georgiou. We have shepherds, and this shepherd is holding a vorka. This is a bag made entirely from the body of a lamb. Uh, <laughs> the legs go like this, like a, a rucksack, and he would carry his food in there. This becomes a fashionable item now, 
amongst young Cypriots. It's somehow an example of cultural sustainability. We're interested in shepherd-inspired fashion because shepherding as a lifestyle, people need to be made aware of it. And the modern person is becoming a bit like a nomad and we, we talk about the nomad lifestyle, but also the actual physical clothes of a shepherd with layering, use of sustainable wool, sustainable leather, that landscape, windswept, free look is something that designers all over the world are interested in. The idea of shepherd inspired fashion came from the stylist of Vivian Westwood, uh, a guy called uh, Stevie Westgarth. And he approached us uh, five years ago now, and since then, we've been working on the theme all over Europe, but especially here in Cyprus, where shepherds are still so important, but more and more being confined in little industrial units, rather than wandering over this beautiful landscape. We're interested in cultural sustainability and encouraging the sustainable grazing of sheep and goats in this wonderful 8,000 year old cultural Mediterranean landscape is part of that. We want to inform people and get more young people involved in the process of looking after sheep and shepherding and we use the fashion element as a sort of hook for that. So Katodris, there's no better place to show shepherd-inspired fashion, to show how shepherds interact with the landscape. So we capture both images, this ancient landscape, this ancient way of dressing, but with a modern touch, the nomad look, the shepherd-inspired look.